This is groundbreaking. This is completely new. It's enhancing what we've got. It's really innovative. It's been fantastically exciting. No longer are the militaries of the world the only people who in some way owned technology development. It is easy for our adversaries to access, it is cheap, it is proliferating around the world. How do we continue to operate in a 21st century maritime battle space in order to maintain a war fighting cutting edge? The capability offered by unmanned and increasingly autonomous technology is advancing at a rapid rate. Unmanned vehicles are doing things that have never been done before, creating new possibilities, challenging the way we operate. But can they work together? Can they give our operational commanders a better understanding of their environment and a competitive edge? Can they reduce the risks faced by our armed forces? And can they perform in the real world, a harsh and unforgiving environment? From here, Unmanned Warrior was born. Unmanned Warrior is about exploring whether there's a potential for getting those new technologies into service much more quickly. It's not just about a demonstration, it's about bringing those systems into a real operational environment and actually getting the data into the hands of an operational commander. It's about creating the Royal Navy operational advantage. In October 2016, over 40 organisations came together with Joint Warrior, the largest military training exercise in Europe to explore and understand the potential of unmanned systems. Unmanned Warrior provides uh, small companies with this great opportunity to be able to present to a worldwide audience in an environment that is demonstrating its real-world capabilities. It's a great opportunity to raise the visibility of what it is we can do, not only with the Royal Navy, the wider MOD, but also with a lot of the industry partners. Taking place off the west coast of Scotland and West Wales, the vast scale and complexities of Unmanned Warrior brought industry, academia and military together, sharing knowledge, problem solving and accelerating progress. We're supporting the Ministry of Defence in a traditional test and evaluation role through the long-term partnering agreement, getting the ranges set up, ensuring that the safety elements are properly attended to. As part of Joint Warrior, competing forces challenged the Unmanned Warrior Task Group to deliver over 100 separate missions, testing the practical utility of the systems and their payloads. In this environment, the Unmanned Warrior community worked collaboratively as never before, pushing their systems to the limits, providing the commanders with key information to better exploit their environment, reduce risk to their own forces, and unlock warfighting advantage. Missions were planned and monitored through the ASA Command and Control System, a development program for future Royal Navy combat management systems. ASA systems were installed aboard Northern River and at the operating bases at the Hebrides and Butech ranges. These systems were networked together to provide a common operational picture. You have the opportunity to integrate so many unmanned vehicles to demonstrate that you can integrate them all into the combat management system in a flexible manner, which no one else has been able to do previously. Ahead of the task group, autonomous systems were deployed to perform environmental surveys using novel sensors. This intelligence provided the commanders with an understanding of the battle space. GM's really important to anything and everything that is involved in the maritime environment. We are collecting environmental data. We process that data and make sure it's relevant and usable. We're providing real-time data rather than relying on archived or historical information. During the two weeks, Unmanned Warrior Forces achieved the largest ever UK mass deployment of ocean gliders, covering over 5,000 square kilometers. Once Joint Warrior Forces had been deployed, the unmanned warrior systems were tasked to support the commander's need for timely and persistent surveillance, seeking out and locating enemy forces. This tasking brought together, many for the first time in the UK, a wide range of air and surface vehicles, all featuring novel sensors and payloads. Building up in complexity, these systems were used together to support Overwatch as missions were undertaken, 
queuing each other and feeding information back into ASA. If you're the captain of a ship, you've got a helicopter, you've got a pilot, you've got an observer. People, as you know, can only stay up in the air for so long and they can only concentrate for so long. And we need to focus that brain power for when it needs to be used. The principal advantages of the unmanned systems are that they remove human beings from the threat and they deliver a vastly improved level of persistence. What we've seen here in Unmanned Warrior is the ability to launch relatively small, relatively cheap systems from warships and enhance what we do. As tasking evolved, the requirement broadened to protect the force against potential submarine and mine threats. Unmanned surface vehicles, capable of sustained operations for significant periods, successfully detected and tracked a submarine target in anti-submarine warfare barrier operations. Air vehicles were then tasked to locate and track the submarine target, reported by one of the surface vehicles. There's no one solution to anti-submarine warfare because of the variety of target platforms that are out there, the variety of environments that you end up working in. What unmanned systems can do is provide a modular approach so that you can design your force package to really meet the challenge that you're particularly facing at the time, as opposed to having one large fixed system that can't adapt to the different environments that it finds itself in. The tasking progressed to protect the force against mines. 28 air, surface and underwater vehicles from four nations were tasked to hunt, locate, classify and neutralise 50 exercise mines. The challenge that you have to overcome at the present moment with traditional MCM is to be able to find out what's in there, you have to put that ship in. So ultimately you're putting the ship in danger. By operating the ship from outside the minefield and deploying these unmanned autonomous systems into the minefield, we greatly reduce the risk to our personnel and we can multiply the effect of that one ship through the use of multiple systems and increase the rate at which we complete the mission. The mine countermeasures work saw a world first, with a multinational team building up to seven autonomous underwater vehicles, operating with two surface vessels and utilizing an unmanned air vehicle to provide an over-the-horizon link to the command. A total of 10 vehicles delivering effective mine countermeasures with the operator tasking the mission from the safety of their Acer terminal. Six weeks of operations saw all objectives met. The deployment of systems stood up to the challenge, with many of the payloads producing outstanding results. The level of integration with Joint Warrior Forces went beyond all expectations, pushing the boundaries of operational experimentation with new technology. I have seen things here that I didn't think were achievable at this stage. I thought that this technology would still be another two years away, but we've seen interoperability that was just unexpected. I personally have never done anything like this before, where we have different nations, different services, a joint and industry technology conglomeration. This is completely new. Unmanned Warrior has exceeded our expectations. We set out a couple of years ago to challenge ourselves. It's been hugely exciting and is actually posing for us now a number of questions about where we want to take this next. Every hour, every pound, every euro, every dollar, every idea has been utterly worthwhile. Innovation has always been something that has helped our armed forces stay at the cutting edge. So it's really important that we invest and investigate all these new technologies. An exercise like this is going to be so valuable in informing the kind of decisions that the Royal Navy and the rest of the armed forces are going to have to make in the years to come.